In today's video, I will explain what BISC is and how its trading protocol works. BISC is open source exchange software for Bitcoin, and in my opinion, it's the best way to buy Bitcoins privately. When you use BISC, there is no trading company involved, you never have to give anyone your personal information, and you can use it with your own Bitcoin wallet rather than trusting your money with somebody else. Installing BISC and placing an order takes only a few seconds. There's no waiting period, no identity verification, and you can immediately buy as much Bitcoin as you want. Unlike a regular Bitcoin exchange, there's no one standing between you and the person you're trading with. Like Bitcoin, there are no central servers coordinating information and requiring your trust. BISC cannot be shut down or censored, and it is constantly being improved because it is free and open source software. In a future video, I plan to demonstrate how to download and install BISC and place your first order to buy Bitcoins privately. In this video, I will discuss how the BISC trade protocol works and what tools it uses to protect you from scammers and thieves. I do want to mention that the trade protocol I describe in this video probably won't be the trade protocol forever. BISC is constantly being updated by developers, and there are already plans to modify the trade protocol in version 2 to support new payment methods like Bitcoin's Lightning Network. But for right now, in July 2020, this is how BISC works. I'll start by laying a foundation for how you might design BISC from the ground up if the only tools you had available were the tools in Bitcoin's built-in programming language, Bitcoin Script, and some way of communicating with others. Then, after describing that foundation, I will add to it by describing some additional protections that BISC builds on top of those basic tools. So, let's say you wanted to create some trading software built on Bitcoin. How might you go about it? Well, here's a naive approach that wouldn't be very safe and wouldn't really work. You could write a program that announces to the internet, I want to buy some amount of Bitcoin, let's say $500. Who wants to sell? Then, someone else who is running the same trading software, let's call him Bob, could scan the internet, find your offer, and connect to your computer to say, hey, I'm willing to sell you $500 in Bitcoin. Here's my P.O. box. Send me a money order for $500 along with a Bitcoin address, and I promise I'll send $500 in Bitcoins to your Bitcoin address as soon as I cash the money order. Now, why did I say this wouldn't work very well? Well, because what happens if you send Bob the money order, and he runs away with it? You might sue him to get your money back, but then you have to go to court and spend a lot of time explaining what happened and providing evidence, and it's just a huge pain. We can do better. What if we have Bob send the bitcoins to your bitcoin address first, and then you send him a money order? Well, that also won't work, because some people won't ever send the money order. The buyer and the seller should both be unable to cheat the other person by running away with their money. So it seems like just using a regular Bitcoin wallet won't work. If I send the money order first, Bob may never send the Bitcoins. If Bob sends the Bitcoins first, I may never send the money order. But wait, here's an idea. What if we could do both at the same time? Bitcoin's got a built-in programming language, Bitcoin Script, and one of the tools it offers us is called a multi-signature address. Let's see if that can help us do both parts of the trade at the same time. There are several kinds of multi-sig addresses supported by Bitcoin Script, and the one BISC uses is called a 2 of 2 address. It's used in the Lightning Network as well, and in some types of escrow contracts and oracle protocols, which I'll hopefully go over in future videos. What does a 2 of 2 address do? Well, if you put money in a 2 of 2 address with someone, you can only spend that money if both of you agree on how to spend it. There are two people who hold private keys to a 2 of 2 address, and if just one of them wants to move money out of that address, he can't do it. Both key holders need to agree on what address or addresses to send the money to. We can do something interesting with that. Suppose that Bob sends the $500 in bitcoins into a 2 of 2 address, where he controls one key and you control the other. Well, now the money is stuck until you both agree that Bob has cashed his money order. Bob can't get his bitcoins back without your help, and you can't get the bitcoins out of the address and into your own wallet without Bob's help. So neither of you is at an advantage at this point. Now let's suppose that once you're at this stage where the bitcoins are in the 2 of 2 address, you send Bob a money order and he cashes it. Now he's happy because he's got his dollars, and there's no way he can get the bitcoins back, so he releases them to you, right? Hmm, there's a problem with that. 
First, what if you send Bob the money order and then he holds your bitcoins hostage by demanding even more money than you agreed to? Bob could cash your money order and then not agree to release the bitcoins from the 2 of 2 address until you send him another $100. He can't get his bitcoins back, so in the worst case scenario, he's out $500 in bitcoin, but he also got 500 US dollars, so it's a wash. And in the best case scenario for Bob, you do send the ransom money and he gets that extra money. What are your options? Well, you could try notifying the police. You do know wherever he said to mail your money order to, and the police could maybe use that as a lead to find him. But if BISC worked this way, some scammers would get away with theft. They might not usually make any money doing this, but they also don't usually lose anything. And if they only win sometimes, it's still a profitable scam. So we still need to do something to prevent Bob from cheating. The next tool that BISC uses, strictly using the functions built into Bitcoin script, is collateral. Instead of depositing only the Bitcoins you're buying into the 2 of 2 address, Bob also deposits 15% additional money as collateral. And you, as the buyer, you deposit 15% too. That way, if either of you cheats, you both are likely to lose money. The basic idea behind using collateral is that if Bob puts an extra 15% into the trade and then doesn't send you your bitcoins, he can't get his collateral back without your cooperation. He may have cast your $500 money order, but he's lost $500 in bitcoin and an additional 15% on top of that in the form of his collateral. So the worst case scenario for him is no longer a wash. The worst case scenario for him, in fact the likely scenario if he cheats, is that he loses money. Also, it's similar for you. When you start your trade and you want to buy some bitcoins, you first have to put 15% collateral in before you do anything else. So now, if you never send Bob his money order, you're on the hook for 15% of the value of the trade. Setting up trades this way incentivizes you and Bob to cooperate. Each of you knows that if you don't follow through with the trade, you're likely to lose money, at least in the form of your collateral. In the first half of the trade, Bob puts money into the 2 of 2 address, and you have the power to burn that money along with Bob's collateral by not sending him a money order. But you'll lose money too, unless you can convince Bob to cooperate with you, which will only work occasionally. This means your default scenario, if you cheat, is that you lose money, making cheating, in general, unprofitable. Your best option, the option where you get your collateral back as well as the $500 in bitcoins that you wanted when you started the trade, is to send Bob a $500 money order and not try to cheat. In the second half of the trade, everything's fair because Bob has similar power over you as you had in the first half of the trade. Bob can keep your money order if he wants to try to cheat, and he could decide to never release the bitcoins in the 2 of 2 address to you. This would cost you $500 in bitcoins as well as your collateral. But Bob will also lose his own collateral, and so he'll be out 15% of the value of the trade. He can try to hold your money hostage, but like I said earlier, that will only work some of the time, which means that, in general, cheating is usually going to be unprofitable for Bob. He is unlikely to make a profit in the long run if he usually loses money when he cheats. And that means the best option for Bob is to release the bitcoins to you, and the way the script is set up, through this method, he also gets his collateral back. This is actually a pretty good incentive system right there, and I think BISC could work quite well if this was the only thing that happened in the trade protocol. Trade disputes would still be bad because both traders would lose money, but that very risk creates a kind of protection called mutually assured destruction. It incentivizes both parties to cooperate because they don't want to lose money on the trade, and this ensures that almost all trades go off without a hitch. But even though this protection would, in my opinion, probably work by itself, BISC does something more. It builds on this foundation by introducing an additional protection. When you set up a 2 of 2 address, there's a neat trick you can do. Before anyone ever sends any money into a 2 of 2 address, both key holders can optionally agree to co-sign a transaction, which gives either party the right to send any money that ends up in the 2 of 2 address to a predetermined address. This transaction acts like a safeguard. Instead of the money getting burned and staying in that 2 of 2 address forever with no one ever able to access it, both parties can co-sign an agreement before any money is ever at stake so that, in the event of a dispute, either party can use this safeguard transaction to send the money to someone they both trust. BISC uses this ordinarily optional function as part of its trade protocol. 
Every computer that runs BISC software refuses to trade with anyone who doesn't agree to co-sign this safeguard transaction. And where does the safeguard transaction send the money if it's used? In the event of a dispute, it gives either party the right to send the whole value of the trade to a donation address controlled by one of the BISC developers. I want to pause here before moving on so that I can emphasize something. It might sound like this safeguard transaction is just a way for BISC developers to get free money from trade disputes, but that's not quite correct. There's an additional protection so that that doesn't happen. Before a trade dispute ever gets to the part where either party sees the button to send the money to the BISC donation address, their computers will automatically contact a volunteer for BISC and tell him or her, hey, there's, there was a dispute during our transaction, please come and help us resolve it so that we don't end up sending this money to the BISC developers as a donation. Now, when that mediator steps in, he doesn't have control of any of the funds. Only the two traders have control of the funds because it's a two of two address and they are the two key holders. But the mediator can listen to both sides and recommend a solution. Depending on the situation, he might recommend different options. For example, if the money order hasn't been cashed yet, he might recommend that the person who wrote the money order call the issuer and void it. Once the buyer is satisfied that he won't lose any money now that the money order is no good, the mediator can then recommend that both parties sign a transaction setting everything back to normal. The buyer will get his collateral back and the seller will get his collateral back as well as the bitcoins he put into the two of two address. And then they can try the trade again with someone else or choose to trade elsewhere. A recommendation like this won't work in all situations, such as if the money order has already been cashed and the recipient is just acting fraudulently, but it is an additional layer of protection so that not everything goes straight to the best developers whenever there's a dispute. A round of communication with a neutral third party, a mediator, can help resolve this stuff before it escalates to the point of sending the money to the BISC donation fund. Okay, so what happens if the mediation doesn't work out for some reason, and the money does get sent to the BISC donation fund? Well, first of all, the BISC donation fund collects money from lots of people, not just trade disputes. But when it receives money due to a trade dispute, the BISC developers send in another volunteer called an arbitrator. The arbitrator is similar to a mediator in that he listens to both sides, just like the mediator did. The difference is, once he decides who he thinks is in the right, he will, out of his own pocket, choose to reimburse one party or the other. Or he may decide to split up the reimbursement if both parties shared some of the blame. Then he goes to the BISC developers and tells them what his decision was and applies for a grant out of the BISC donation fund so that he gets reimbursed himself. If the BISC developers agree that he did a good job as an arbitrator, they will then reimburse him out of their donation fund and everyone will then be happy. The BISC developers didn't lose anything other than an unexpected donation. The arbitrator didn't lose anything because he was reimbursed out of the donation fund. And the traders didn't lose anything, unless the arbitrator decided that one of them was a scammer, because they got reimbursed by the arbitrator. I want to emphasize that all of the protections involving mediation and arbitration are not enforced by the Bitcoin protocol, but only by the goodwill of the BISC developers. The Bitcoin protocol can only enforce the collateral, the multisig, and the safeguard transaction. The first two of those protections, if they were all that BISC had, would already provide strong protection of the buyer and the seller through the threat of mutually assured destruction. If either party cheats, both lose money. But BISC builds on that by using the safeguard transaction and the goodwill of the BISC developers, as well as other contributors, the mediators and the arbitrators, so that there are even more protections. The mediator and the arbitrator are a clever addition to what the Bitcoin protocol can enforce on its own, and I like to consider them as extra bonuses on top of BISC's already strong built-in protections. Before I wrap up, I want to try to imagine a worst-case scenario for BISC. Let's suppose that in the future, arbitrators and mediators get regulated by a government that wants to hurt BISC and to turn it into a centralized exchange. What could we do to protect it and make it decentralized again? Well, if that happened, the project could be forked to eliminate the role of mediators and arbitrators. And BISC would still work. It would still have strong protections through incentivized cooperation, the basic threat of mutually assured destruction if either party cheats. Since neither side wants to lose money, their best option, even if there were no mediators or arbitrators, would be to hold up their end of the bargain. So in a worst case scenario, where a government tried to regulate BISC's volunteers, it could still work without them. 
Nevertheless, as long as we have relatively friendly governments to work with, the mediators and arbitrators in BISC create additional protections that are arguably better than what BISC could offer without them. And the arbitration system also provides a way for people to earn bitcoins by volunteering for BISC, even without buying and selling bitcoins. If you start volunteering as a mediator or an arbitrator, you can apply for reimbursements for your volunteer hours from the BISC donation fund, and the developer who controls that address may grant it to you. For more information about that, check out the references at the end, particularly the BISC channel on Keybase Messenger. Throughout this video, I've sung the praises of BISC, and I think it deserves high praise because, in my opinion, it is the best, most private way to buy bitcoins available. But I also want you to know some of the pitfalls. BISC is not perfect. One of the downsides of BISC is that the trade protocol is a little confusing. At its foundation, it could rest entirely on incentivized cooperation, but instead there's also a mediation and arbitration process in the event of a dispute. There's also the issue of collateral. You can't really buy your first bitcoins on BISC because you have to already have enough bitcoins to put up collateral for your trade. The complexity of the BISC protocol and the collateral issue make it hard to onboard someone to BISC. But hey, I hope this video helps a little bit with that. I am also a little wary of arbitrators because I think that some degree of trust is placed in them, and I suspect that in the future some arbitrators may abuse this trust. BISC trades can be done basically anonymously, although that part's not perfect either, and I suspect that, due to how private it is, one or more BISC arbitrators in the future could become dishonest and collude together to play the part of an anonymous buyer or seller. If they did that, they could open a dispute and send the other party's bitcoins to the BISC donation address. And then, if one of the dishonest arbitrators was selected to arbitrate the case, they could reimburse themselves instead of the injured party. The injured party would be able to complain and let everyone know their side of the story, but this whole scenario seems to me to open up a potential attack vector for people who don't like BISC to try to coordinate scenarios that injure the reputation of the project. Finding some way to address this would be a good thing to do right now, in my opinion, otherwise it could cause a serious trust problem in the future. But nonetheless, I think BISC is already, without any changes, the best way to buy bitcoins, and I highly recommend it to everyone. No project will ever be perfect or have no problems, and BISC is already really awesome. So give it a try, and while you're at it, stay tuned, because I hope to make more videos soon.